So you took the job of making a quick overview of the convex hull optimization trick. So I've written down the notes already because this is my second time recording it. I um, had a couple of issues recording it. But I'll go over what the convex hull optimization trick is and then some little proofs to give some intuition behind why this algorithm works. And yeah, so let's just start off with the main idea that the convex hull optimization trick isn't necessarily a computational geometry trick. Instead, it looks at the lower envelope in terms of an optimization problem. So here's the problem we're going to be covering. So given a set of linear lines, provide an algorithm that will, for any x value, return the lowest y value for any of the lines evaluated at x. So if we have a set of different lines, and we have a specific x value, I want to find from all of those lines which one has the lowest y value. So obviously, brute force, we can just go through every single line, evaluate it at x, and then store whichever one's the lowest. So if we have q queries and n number of lines, we have o of n q. Now this convex hull trick that I'm going to be showing will actually give n plus q log n time. So here's what I'm going to propose first. I'm going to show a short little proof and then we're going to move on from there. So if we sort all the lines uh, by decreasing uh, slope and remove all things that I consider irrelevant. So by irrelevant I mean if you see that yellow stretch over there, it will never show up in that yellow stretch. Like it's like those two blue parallel lines. They never show up in any case from y equals zero on uh, x equals zero on to infinity. So in that case, they're irrelevant. I don't need those lines because those lines never show up in the lower envelope. So here's the proof, and the proof is fairly simple. Let's just assume for the sake of contradiction that if we have this lower envelope, there exists one point where it's no longer decreasing in slope; instead, it increases in slope. Okay, well, how does that work? Well, if it's increasing in slope, then we can show simply by contradiction that the line to the left of it, if we do a limit arbitrarily small, the line that was increasing, if it is true that that's the next correct line, that's the lowest value, then the line to the left of it is not actually the lowest point because the line to the right of it had a higher slope. In a higher slope, when you decrease x by a little bit, the y decreases by more than the line before it, which had a smaller slope. So that's sufficient to show contradiction that it's always decreasing. Now the tricky part is, how do we process our lines to show that a line is irrelevant? Now to show that a line is irrelevant, the way we're going to do this is we're going to first sort all the lines in decreasing order. After sorting all the lines in decreasing order, we're going to have lines like L1, L2, L3. So consider Li, Li plus 1, and Li plus 2. Graph Li, Li plus 1, Li plus 2. So for this case, we're just going to say it's L1, L2, L3. And take the point of intersection between L1 and L2 and L1 and L3. So if we take the point of intersection between those, we're going to get something like this. So L1, L2, and then L1, L3 is like this. We notice the following. We notice that L2 is irrelevant if and only if the point of intersection L1, L3, its x component and <laughs> denote it like that. Is less than the component of the other one. So first of all, by definition, L3 slope will be less. Okay? So we have the slope of L3 is less than the slope of L2. Now the second component is saying that L1 is actually going to be L point L1, L3 if the x value of it, so L1, L2, is here and here. If the x value is to the left of it, to the left of the other one, and we have that the slope is less, this means that when, by the time we get to the same x value for the other line, it will actually be lower it will actually be lower than the other one. 
And why is that the case? Well, because since we have one line intersecting before the other one, the x, y, this means that it gets to this value quicker. And then since this one already has a lower slope, we automatically see that at the same x value, it will have to be lower. So let's say this line advanced quicker than it would have intersected earlier. But since it doesn't intersect earlier, then at the same x value here, it will actually be lower. So there's no case where it will intersect before and we'll be able to use it, leverage L2 in such a way that it will appear in the lower envelope. Now how do we prove the converse of this? So the converse is we need to show that if the point is to the right, then it will always be useful. Well, if the point is to the right, as is in this case over here, the point is to the right, this means that we intersect the other line first. Since we intersect L2 first, then L2 clearly needs to appear because it intersected it and it's a lower slope, which makes sense, which will pick precedence for that line before the other line. Now, L3 didn't appear yet because we didn't intersect for it, so for any minuscule operation, assuming there's no concurrent lines, assuming We will actually be able to resolve this properly and then only contain lines that are relevant. So if we only contain lines that are relevant, then what is the processing actually looking like? Well, for starters, we're going to have O of n log n to process um, and sort all the lines. Afterwards, for every single one, for every single query, we're going to have to do a log n search to find the actual answer. Now why is it a log n search? Because we're going to have to be looking through all of the different lines to determine at which point it's maximum. Because they're decreasing we can simply perform a binary search and that binary search will retrieve the answer. But we perform this uh, q times for and each time takes log n time. So log n time log in time for Q queries. So if we simplify this, we get O of n plus Q log n, which is much faster than n Q. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on Convex Hull trick and hope it makes sense. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.